today concerns the phylogeny of Jarungic, Jarungic languages, which can be considered as a work in progress report of the present pr project. That is, we are still in the middle and yet to have a definite result. So first, let me say something about Jarungic languages. Um, many of you may already know, these are a group of languages mainly spoken in Zhengawa and Gamzi prefectures in Sichuan, China, first proposed by Sun Tianxin or Jackson Sun exactly 20 years ago. Originally, only those varieties spoken in Sichuan are identified, but recently the um, discovery of Zlarong and other non-Tibetic languages in Chamdu in Tibet, um, as well as the reclassification of Tangut as a West Jarungic language, extend the Jarungic territory to the west into Tibet and to the north into the province of Ningxia in China. And Jarungic languages are one of the most phonologically and morphologically conservative branches in Sino-Tibetan. And Guillaume Jacques once said in a casual occasion, Proto-Sino-Tibetan would have looked very much like Proto-Jarungic. Jarungic languages are one of the most important keys to answer the many questions about the ancestry of Sino-Tibetan. So the map is here. The red dots show the distribution of Jarungic languages traditionally defined. Um, last year has seen two important papers on Sino-Tibetan phylogeny. The first one is published in Nature by a team from Fudan University. And the second one is published in PNAS by our team. Um, so let's have a look at how these two studies classify Jarungic. First, let's examine the results from uh, Zhang, Men Zhang Menhan et al's paper. They identify a subgroup containing Jarungic and Changik, um, including a branch of traditional Jarungic languages, such as Tsobdun, Jokzi, or Marikang, and Daofu, or Stao. Um, and Daofu and Ergong, these two languages are actually, these are different terms referring to the same language, actually. Another branch concerns the likes of Pumi, Chueyu, and Qiang, um, which is termed Qianggik in their work. And in Sagar et al's 2019's paper, um, we have identified a Burmo Jarungik subbranch with the Jarungik subgroup subgroupings illustrated in this image. We included core Jarungik languages, such as Jokze, Marikang, and Japuk, uh, as well as West Jarungic languages, Daofu and Wubzi Trustyap. Um, and our results also, sh also show that two languages traditionally not considered as Jarungic are clustered together with Jarungic. Tangut, which is Xixiayu in Chinese, is clustered with West Jarungic, and Jaba seems to be the first branch of Jarungic. Neither of the two studies emphasizes the Jarungic branch, only a portion of languages are, in, are included. So the current presentation aims to put more languages according to data availability to explore the subgrouping of these languages. So we have included some languages that are traditionally identified as Jarungic languages like Japug, Zbu, Tsobdun, several dialects of Situ, and several dialects of Trostjap and Stau. Then we also included Tangut, which is shown with linguistic evidence as a West Jarungic language. Also, Zlarung, which is a newly identified non-Tibetic language in Tibet, which is suspected to be a West Jarungic language. So um, we are very careful about the, the accuracy and the correctness of our data. We prefer first-hand data than second-hand data. Most of the data are directly uh, from the fieldwork of the future co-authors of the final paper. Um, and the main authors, me and Guillaume Jacques, we are familiar with uh, Jarungic languages. We are capable of identifying um, potential mistakes in the data. Um, if we have doubts about certain items, we will immediately ask for confirmation from the source. So we have done quite a lot to make sure that the data are accurate. So here, are the core Jarungic languages selected for the analysis. We have three dialects of Situ, 
uh, Chokche um, from Lin Xiangrong 1993, and Brabar's uh, Situ um, from the unpublished, gram uh, unpublished word list of Zhang Shuya, my colleague, and Zhongzhou from uh, Prince 2016. And of course, uh, Japuk from Guillaume Jacques' work, and uh, Chopdun from Jackson Sun, and Njal Zhu uh, from Gongxin's doctoral thesis, as well as some personal email exchanges with him. As far as West Jerungik is concerned, we have chosen four Trostyap dialects, Guan Chao from Huang Bufan, 2007, Njorok from Yin Wei Bin, 2007, and Wubzi and Si Wu from my own field data. We also included three Stawik varieties, Dao Fu from the word list in Huang, 1992, Mazul Stao from Jesse Gates' word list, and Ge Shi Zha from Sami Hong uh, doctoral thesis. And of course, Tangut uh, from Li Fanwen's 1997 dictionary is also included. Some uh, former Changik languages that were shown to be very close to traditional Jerungik are also included for the analysis. Uh, Jaba from Huang to uh, 1992, um, and two dialects of Muya, uh, one from Huang 1992 and the other from Gaoyang 2016, and two dialects of Chuyu, uh, one from Huang 1992 and the other from Guan Shen's field data plus personal communication. And finally, the famous Zlarong, the newly identified non Tibetic language from uh, Zhao Haoliang 2019, his master thesis. So I would like to call this group uh, of languages um, the macro Jerungic group. Our group is to see the relations among, um, our goal is to see the relations among languages in this macro Jerungic group. So here is the geographic distribution of the languages chosen. Um, now I would like to talk something about the um, lexical commonalities of macro Jerungic. Um, we know that shared innovations are the only linguistic criterion for the, for the identif identification of a linguistic sub subgroup. Here, I am going to present some of the shared lexical innovations of Burmo Jerungic on the basis of the appendix of Sagar et al's 2019's paper and a forthcoming paper by Jacques and Bellard. There are 10 concepts to be presented. The front side, cloud, put in, year, B, be red, lung, fly, new, and sky. So the front side, we can see the cognates here are, all have a rhotic initial, etc. The cloud, we have the likes of zdim in burmo jerungic languages, zdim, zdo, zdim, etc. Mm, and to put in, it is characterized by a velar initial, shku, gashko, gashko, ku, ge, etc. And year. So um, we have also a velar form. This form is preserved in most West Jerungic languages. And we also find it in um, Lolo-ish languages as well. And to put in, um, to be, uh, to be, a nasal velar um, that probably meant, meant originally to be true, to be correct. Mu, ngo, nga, ngo, ngu, ngo, etc. And to be read, um, it is characterized by a dental nasal, rjni, mnug, nini, etc. And the lung here um, with a dental affricate, with uh, probably a um, pre initial. Uh, rotate pre initial, the etc. To fly is characterized by, with a um, labial element, etc. And the concept new is shown here. Actually, it could be related to Chinese. Old Chinese sar yielding modern Mandarin xian to be fresh, but the vila coda seems to to be a Burmo Jerungic innovation. Shuk, shuk, shuk. 
and sky, it's well known that Burmo Jerungic languages use a uh, labial nasal for sky. The murgo, murgo, mu, etc. And now I would like to talk something about morphological commonalities. Morpholo morphology is still very poorly understood as far as macro Jerungic languages are concerned. Most languages are not thoroughly, thoroughly described, and there are surely a lot of uh, peculiarities that aren't discovered yet. So I would like to focus on inverse marking here. Although inverse marking is probably not a macro um, innovation since it is also found in Kiranti languages, it is better preserved in macro and could be useful for the internal subgrouping of macro -gerungic. You may er already know that this marker has to do with the empathy hierarchy of grammatical persons in a given language. In Jerungic, it's usually first person that ranks the highest, and then comes um, second person, and then third person. Some languages distinguish between different kinds of third persons. In a transitive construction, a direct scenario is when the A ranks higher than the P, and on the contrary, um, when the, um, in, the, in an inverse scenario, the P ranks higher than the A. So, and in this inverse scenario, the inverse marker is required in Jerungic languages. So here is the gen generic inverse system in core Jerungic languages. It is characterized by a distinction between a proximative third person, which has a more salient role, and an obviative third person, which is less salient. In different core Jerungic languages, there are different criteria for this dis distinction. Some are based on animacy and other, other on pragmatic usages. Uh, some, are, some are based on the grammatical number, some based on tense. In West Jerungic, the distinction between proximate and operative is neutralized. This is also considered as a shared innovation of the branch. It is no doubt that Trostyap and Stawik varieties have this feature. And we also found that Tangut shows indirect trace of it. And also according to Gao 2016, Munya shares the proximate objective of neutralization too. So it is highly possible that Munya is also very closely related to West Jerungic languages. So let's look at their forms. They all have a form with, the, with some labial, velar, or rounded features. Some appear as full-fledged prefixes and some merge with neighboring segments. In Stawik varieties in particular, the, um, the inverse prefix is reduced to um, an f, which is to be analyzed as a part of the verb stem in citation forms. In Munya, the inverse marker is U, and it is dependent on orientational prefixes that usually precede inverse markers. It has already developed into a third person A marker. In Chuyu, the inverse marker is fully in integrated into the verb stem, which is the W, the W here. I think um, this is the only trace of inverse marking. I think this implies that Cheru has a very close relationship with Stawik as well. So let's come to the computer part. As we have our lexical data prepared, we need to let the computer know which words are cognates, which are not. More precisely, we need the computer to know which parts of the words are cognates, which parts are not. Because sound pattern languages are particularly rich in compounding, more often than not, the forms in different languages for, for the same concept may have only may have only a sometimes minor part that is related. So we need to annotate partial cognates instead of full cognates, as related words may, may only share some of their morphemes. For example, the different forms for moon in Chinese dialects. Only the red part, ngo, nyat, nyu, yu, is the real cognate. So, what's wrong? So, our method is to combine manu, um, manual uh, language comparison with computational comparison. We manually 
annotate cognates using our knowledge on Jarungic languages and let the computer finally analyze the cognacy patterns. As linguists are experienced language researchers, they demonstrate great accuracy and flexibility in cognate identification, while computers work strictly according to rules. It is difficult at the present stage to, to define all the rules in Jarungic historical linguistics. Therefore, computer will surely lack accuracy in cognate identification, and they won't have any flexibility either. But they are consistent and efficient as their performance will not downgrade as they do not get tired. So the combined forces of linguists, human brains and the computer's electronic brains will presumably be very effective for, for historical linguistics. In order to cooperate with the computer in a more satisfactory way, we need to make our data neat enough for the computer to understand. So the team has developed the CLDF standard cross-linguist data format, which uses rows, columns, and IPA to facil facilitate machine readability. And the simplicity of this format, format will also be easy for others to learn. So it, is also, it also facilitates collaboration as well. So we should provide data in both human and machine readable form and allow for both the comparison across and inside a given language. We embrace standards while also allowing for flexible and language specific solutions. And we use our web-based tool, namely Edicta, to assist the annotation process. So let's have a look at this image. It is the interface of Edicta. It is um, the different forms in macro jarungic languages for yesterday. As you can easily predict, all of the forms are compoundings. So there are two cognates for day, highlighted here, a group with a dental nasal, sni, and another group with a sibilant, si. Um, some languages use night to make the word for yesterday, highlighted here, sir, shwar, etc. And there are two morphemes among different languages for last. So the languages just pick one form for last and one form for day or night and combine them together to form the word yesterday. So if we do not annotate partial cognates, we will lose some major cognacy information for this concept. So you can see the necessity to really make an effort to identify the, the morphemes. Now let's come to the Bayesian inference. Because we're still at the initial stage of the study, we haven't involved our main specialists of Bayesian phylogeny inference yet. So what we are showing is a preliminary but still presentable result. Bayesian analysis is not a black box algorithm. It works the best when we give the model as much information as we can. Therefore, we give the model the calibration points of all Burmese and Tangut. 800 years before present for Obermese and 900 years before present for Tangut. So to model the language specification process, we apply the calibrated Yule model as the tree prior, which means the possibility of a language being born follows a given statistical distribution. It is clear that the lexical changes do not follow the same rate. Therefore, we use relaxed molecule model a clock relaxed clock, which does not strictly regulate the lexical change rate to mimic mutation process. So here is the preliminary tree we have for now. One thing to keep in mind that the output is that the output of a Bayesian analysis cannot be seen as a definite answer. It is a tool which allows us to observe a general pattern from modeling the language, language specification process for 10 million or more times. That is to say, to repeat the history 10 million times. Therefore, the consensus tree is just the, the agreement of 10 million trees. The black numbers on the tree are the ages, that is to say, years before present. And the blue numbers are the posterior probabilities under 70%. All the other branches um, have poster posterior prob probabilities higher than um, 70 percent, so most of them are quite convincing. Only these five branches 
uh, seem to lack evidence from the analysis. Anyway, we can see the tree roughly matches our ex expectation with the root age that's some 4,200 years before present, as well as uh, most sub-branches ages um, corresponding to the results of Sagar and colleagues' scientific pattern paper last year. And the position of Tangut is outside um, the West Jarungic branch, which is also expected. So I think the result here is promising. We have a general structure of Jarungic language. Jarungic, as expected, we are confident that we can have a more reasonable result when our mathematicians and specialists join. And from the part of us linguists, um, we will continue working on cognate identification and annotation as this part is just the key to success. So um, this is all I have to say today. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, that was wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any um, questions? If you have any questions, you can indicate in chat and uh, I can call in. Uh, oh, Jesse has a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. All right, yeah. Um, uh, Yunfan, it's great to see you again. Uh, uh, great to see you. Yeah, um, it was a very interesting paper. So, um, thank you very much for sh sharing the results, even though you guys haven't finished it all up yet. Um, I'm particularly interested in why you had mentioned, it wasn't clear to me, um, why you mentioned that the um, percentages were, that were, uh, was it 70% confidence, under 70% confidence at the very end, um, that those were the ones you were expecting to, uh, to turn out that way. Um, maybe you can just uh, fill me in a little bit more do a little bit more elaboration on that. The other thing, the other question I had um, uh, is about the Koske uh, um, dialect with with the choice of Lin Qianrong's data, and just curious as to why you chose that, and is there not better data out there for uh, Jokaji? Okay, um, so I'm so I am actually. It is my duty to show the. Um, these blue numbers because they are they they lack evidence, and I, I cannot just uh, I can just cannot just tell you that this is the, the definite answer. So, I, I I can just only tell you that these are not support. These are um, lack evidence that uh, supporting evidence for for these branches. But actually, if we from the eyes of a linguist, they are they are they are very. I mean, they're they are very sure to be clustered together in the same branch. Do you have the same impression as, as I do? And the second question is about the Zhokaji dialect, is it? Um, yeah, we, because we used um, the Lin Xiangrong's data, it was annotated very well in our um, 2019 paper for, um, for, um, for PNAS. Um, so we just reused the data from from uh, from the paper from last year. Um, so yes, we 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 can have we can we can actually use the Zhokaji word list from uh, Lin Yujing. Perhaps it is better, and we can ask Lin Yujing about the words, etc. Yeah, we, we can consider about changing changing the, the data set. Wonderful. Do we have any additional questions? I have about five more minutes for questions if anybody has any. Okay. Okay. Jesse has another question. Feel okay. free to ask. Yeah. If nobody else is going to ask, can you go back to some of the the data uh, pages again with the um, the various sound changes that were happening? Um, maybe just starting with the the first one, I guess. Um, um, yeah. 
This yeah, one. yeah. Oh, um, actually, you know what it was? It was the one with the um, the the W um, medial. Um, um, the the inverse marker, right? Uh, no, no, no. It was it was with the uh, with those examples, the lexical examples, okay. where you, yeah, like this one, yeah. Cool. Okay. So yeah, um, well, it's just interesting to me. Um, so the claim is that um, that you're making, just to clarify is the sound change is resulting in a uh, labial velar um, approximate or um, you know this kind of medial is emerging is that is that the idea um, actually um, the idea is that this set of cognates um, is not found outside Bermo Jarungik. so this is okay. lexical innovation but actually mm. I think war in Mazur style maybe uh, came from some kind of score, right? Mm, yeah, it's possible. Because in in, a, in, a, in another dialect, it it is score, school. Right. Yeah, and there's another. Uh, well, another issue might be to look at. I've um, now in my revision of my phonology, I found that mm -hmm. that medial, um, and I'm representing it with a V um, now okay. because there's several allophones. Uh, okay. Sometimes V, sometimes F, and sometimes W. Okay. Um, and so, one thing to be also looking for is maybe um, those representations, because it's possible that um, in some of the the dialects that you're, or in other dialects of of Jarungic that you're investigating, uh, might be using, uh, you know, different allophones as the representation. Yeah. For um, for that. Um, mm -hmm. And one other thing was about the actually the inverse prefix is that I'm mm -hmm. wondering why you've chosen F as the the unvoiced um, version. I know it's a it's a voicing assimilation rule, which is a general rule yeah. actually for all um, Horpa, basically all Horpa dialects that I've uh, encountered with any pre-initial or mm -hmm. um, you know uh, prefix for that matter. Um, but uh, for historical reasons, it might be better to use the V for that, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's just a, I mean, it's a minutia yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I'll follow your suggestion because, because I think this is reasonable to use V. I myself use V as the, the representation of this phoneme in Trostjad, but I don't know. <laughs> Right. So, so, I mean, I might have been the one that uh, I've changed since then. So that's probably my data. And I uh, made that mistake with uh, putting the F there. But anyways, that might be better. for. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll change it in, in the data set as well. Okay. I think times, right? Time's Sorry, right. I was a little muted there. Um, yeah, Tyler had a... Um, uh, comment in some dialects, dialects of Lisu, yours pronounced as Kvul. I don't know if you had anything oh, additional yeah, you wanted to add to that. Yeah, or? because yeah, Lisu is also a, a, a low lowish language, so it, it is um, a, um, lexical innovation of Burmo Jerungic. But now we um, we still we we are still not do not have enough knowledge on Jerungic proper the lexical innovations in Jarungic proper, maybe there are more words that are only shared by Jarungic languages, but um, then there are just no publication on it yet. And we'll work on it later in future studies. Okay, let's uh, give our presenter, presenter a round of applause or a virtual round of applause.